Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a 3 by 3 matrix and we're going to find the determinant of that matrix by reducing the matrix to echelon form. We're going to use all three steps, row addition, interchanging rows, and multiplying or dividing a row by a constant as necessary. And of course, we don't have to make any adjustments to the answer when we do row additions, but we do have to make adjustments to the answer either by multiplying the answer by negative 1 or multiplying or dividing the answer by that constant that we used in the reduction to echelon form. To make sure we know what the answer is, let's go ahead and use the traditional method to find the determinant of B. And we'll put it over here. Take the determinant of the matrix B, which is equal to the first element, minus 2 times the determinant of those four elements, that would be 2, 3, 2, 6, minus the second element, which is a 4, times, and we cross out this column and this row, we end up with those four elements, 1, 3, negative 4, and 6, and then finally plus the last element, which is 6, times the determinant we get when we cross out this row and this column, we get those four elements right here, 1, 2, negative 4, and 2. Simplifying that, this gives us minus 2 times 12 minus 6, that would be 6, minus 4 times 6 minus a minus 12, that's 6 plus 12, or 18, and here we get plus 6 times, that gives us 2 minus a minus 8, that's 2 plus 8, which gives us 10. Continuing, we get minus 12. This here would be minus 72, and that gives us plus 60. So this is equal to a minus 84 plus 60. That's a minus 24, which is the determinant of the matrix B. Now let's see if we can find the same results when we use the reducing the echelon methodology. So here we have our original matrix. What we want to do here is take these elements right here, these three elements, and turn those into zeros. We don't care what the value of the other elements are, but the additional methods of doing that is using row addition, interchanging rows if it helps us, and dividing or multiplying a row by a constant. The first thing I would like to do is interchange row 1 and row 2 because I have a 1 here and it is advantageous to have a 1 in the upper left corner. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is interchange row 1 and row 2. Remember, when we do that, if we interchange the rows at the end, we're going to have to multiply the answer by negative 1. When we do that, we get the following matrix. So we get 1, 2, 3 in the first row minus 2, 4, 6 in the second row, and minus 4, 2, and 6 in the third row. Now we want to get rid of these two elements, and we can do that as follows using what we call row addition. We're going to take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number, that's a positive 2, times row 1, add it to row 2, and row 3, we're going to replace that by taking the negative of that number, which is a positive 4, multiply times the first row, R1, and adding it to the third row. When we do that, we're going to turn these two into zeros. So we get 1, 2, and 3. 2 times 1 is 2 added to 2 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4 added to 4, which is 8. 2 times 3 is 6 added to 6, which gives me a 12. For the third row, 4 times 1 added to negative 4 is 0. 4 times 2, 8, plus 2 is 10, and 4 times 3, 12 plus 6 is 18. So we're almost there. We only have one more element to go. We want to get rid of this element right here. To do that, we're going to take this element, but hmm, it being an 8 is kind of difficult to work with. Let's reduce that. We can divide this row by 4. So what we're going to do is take row 2 and replace it by 1 fourth row 2. Remember again, when we divide a row by a number, like a constant right here, that means our answer at the end will have to be multiplied by that constant. So let's do that and see what we get. Up here we get the new matrix. The matrix now is equal to, we still have the 1, 2, and 3. 
This now becomes 0, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the second row is now reduced to that form. The third row stays the same, 0, 10, and 18. Since we want to get rid of this 10 right here, that can be accomplished by taking the third row and replacing it by negative 5 times the second row, because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, add it to 10, you get 0. So you're going to add that to the third row. When you do that, you get the following matrix. The first row did not change, the second row did not change, and the third row now becomes, this is a zero, negative five times two is negative 10 added to 10 is zero, negative five times three is negative 15 added to 18 gives me positive three. Notice we have all zeros there, we've accomplished what we set out to do, we have reduced the matrix to echelon form. Now we can say that the determinant of the original matrix, the determinant of the original matrix B, is equal to the product of the diagonal, which is 1 times 2 times 3. And now we have to keep track of what we did during the process. We had a row exchange, an interchange of rows means we have to multiply times a negative 1. And we divided one of the rows by 4, which means if we divide a row by a constant, we have to multiply the answer by that same constant, so multiply times 4. And if we then multiply this out, we get 6 times negative 1 times a positive 4, which is negative 24. And notice, if we keep careful track of our process, whenever we do an exchange or interchange of rows, or whenever we divide or multiply a row by a constant, if we account for that in the very end, then we can find the determinant by multiplying the diagonal elements and by also multiplying by those last few constants that we accumulated through the process. And that's how it's done.